I'm Brandon, ups and downs, money in the bank, of course. My fault I'm taking so long to get to it. It's just, I had to take a little break from YouTube, man. I thought I was going to take a break for like three weeks, but to be honest, all I needed was a few days. I feel completely refreshed. I feel good. I feel ready, ready to go back hard. So you know what? Probably on Monday, I'm probably going to start back with like three videos per day again. You know what I'm saying? Three or four per day. I just needed a quick little break because I felt like, man, man, I've been putting in so much fucking work. But anyway, ups and downs for Money in the Bank. Um, after I react to this, I'm going to react to Raw. I might even do NXT. I don't know. I might drop a lot of videos today. I'm feeling real good. I'm hanging out with Baby Girl. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you got to watch the video. If you know what I'm talking about, then you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but it, anyway, if you don't know, you don't know. Shit. That's all I'm trying to say. Um, this video is hella long. It's 20 minutes. So, of course, if I have anything to say, I'm just going to speak over Simon. I'm going to try not to pause it. Y'all know me, I can talk a lot like I'm doing right now in the beginning. So I'm not trying to make this video like a 25 minute video, you feel me? So yeah, let's hop on into it. Well, my friends, that was very different. I just want to say this. As what up, Simon? How you doing, bro? Situation. You doing good? You know what I'm I hope you're doing good. Well, look, we are there. So if wrestling wants to be really ridiculous, if wrestling wants to be really goofy, and wrestling wants to be really dumb, I shall put my hand in the air and say, my name is Simon Miller, and I am enjoying this muchly because it makes me laugh and it makes me entertained. And when it comes to WWE, nice. that is literally the word on the marquee. World Wrestling Entertainment. So with all that in mind, it's time to take this, the finger of power. And He's so dirty, man. I love down. this cat, bro. I love this dude, man. Hey, hey, hey. Money on the roof. Who ain't gonna believe who walked away with those briefcases? Let's up those doubts. So I know Oscar walked away with the briefcase because I already reacted to uh, uh, Becky Lynch saying she's pregnant on Raw and Oscar's the champion. So I know Oscar won. So I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna skip over that part when we talk about Oscar. Because so I already know. Bro, y'all kind of look alike. Taking on Jeff Hardy because, of course, they've been knee deep in a feud for the last few weeks. No, that was Sheamus. However, ain't that Cesaro crazy? They look like they could be cousins, maybe even brothers. brothers. It's justified, not justified at all. Both but big bald head homies. Nice. I enjoyed it. Give it up. All there really is to say about it. Cesaro lost because he always loses. Jeff Hardy won. But usually, Jeff Hardy does win. Okay. Cesaro's Swiss stock meter thing stays at zero because, again, Cesaro never wins. Yeah, it was True. just there. Maybe, and I guess maybe that's all I can say about it. He kind of beats well, me. Well, guys, I appreciate you. And then the first match proper on Money on the Roof was the tag team champions from SmackDown The New Day. Taking okay. on Miz and Morrison. Taking on the Lucha House Party. Uh -huh. Taking on the Forgotten Sons. And even though we essentially saw this only 48 hours ago, it was still pretty damn good. It's getting it up. Oh. The real key was that towards the end, there was so much action and so many near falls and so many last minute, oh, we're going to break it up. And we did at one point. I even thought the Lucha House Party were going to come the new champions. And they go missing all the time to the point I'm ringing my friends like, that would have been the crazy. Lucha House Party. Right? I don't know where they are. The only ridiculous thing was that at one point, Michael Cole actually said the words, oh, it's the Forgotten Sons, who call themselves the Forgotten Sons because they believe they've been forgotten. Thanks, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> bit when Jackson Ryker was on the outside helping the Forgotten Sons, was told by the referee he had to leave, even though seconds before the announcers had told us this was a no disqualification match. But he still left. Why well, need to stand there and go, no, I'm not going. What's the referee going to do? Well, I'll disqualify you otherwise. No, he won't. It's no disqualification. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to interfere. Everything would have had to continue. But because he's a point, Dexter, he left. It was all this fracas that took the common ones out of okay. the game, though. And that allowed Big E to hit the big ending on Grand Metal League. Let's face it, essentially, we've got house party. Win this match to begin with. Mm. And the New Day remain your SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Now, I'll tell you what I'm excited about here. One, again, there's some great teams in the division. Makes me feel all good inside. But two, given who did win the men's money on the roof slash money in the bank, maybe we can use this to light a proper fire under the Tag Team Division. Please make it happen. Obviously, it won't, but I'm going to believe. Lacey Evans then okay, cut after this, and I can't recap you. What she said, 
Because the whole time I was... So clearly somebody who won the Money in the Bank match for the men is related to... Uh, something that has to do with the New Day because based on what he Look just said. Man. So let's that see. a damn big hat. She was wearing this massive yellow hat. At one point, I thought, man, Lacey Evans... That's church lady something. stuff. That's what southern that lady is? stuff, bro. She was saying she's going to win money. Yeah, I'm not nothing about that, Simon. What a giant hat. Drew McIntyre also had this... <laughs> That's southern Charlie stuff, Cruz. man. So when she said to him, oh, tonight, Drew, you've got your first title defense since you beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Wasn't Drew McIntyre versus the Big Show for the World Championship? And even if I'm wrong, shouldn't I know that I'm wrong? It's just so confusing. However, McIntyre came across like a strong, confident baby face. That's the right way to go. Things then got really I hope he to say. on so many levels. For starters, we were having MVP versus R Truth, which is the most stuff just happens WWE. Yeah, that is random. Is. But also, one of these guys is retired, and the other guy is meant to be looking for Gronk. I don't think before this they even had a conversation. Truth was brilliant <laughs> as always, as he did his entrance as if there was 10,000 people in the crowd. Obviously, there was no one there, but Truth was crazy. He thought there was, and he carried this on when MVP was in the ring. <laughs> He started throwing free throws and telling MVP that each one was going in. Because, you know, he was balling. I just love our truth. But then, and I kid you not, Bobby Lashley just walked out. Because I guess someone backstage went, Bobby, there's a tire at ringside. So he strutted on down, told MVP to leave. And MVP went, ah, right, yeah, cool. And then Bobby Lashley just whipped our truth there. Imagine that anywhere else. Imagine the Miami Dolphins, what? the Green Bay Packers. And all of a sudden, the Patriots walked on and went, uh, Miami, you step aside, we're going to go. And they went, yeah, cool, do whatever you want. We couldn't give two shit. That's what happened here. That anyway, is, that is Warren, random. The truth got absolutely decimated here. That's Miser hella Bay random. Wheels, and I have no idea but for what, what? Down. Yeah, Baron for Corbin what? Next up to get a selfie promo about money on the roof. And all I'm going to say is thank you, Baron, no, for no, actually no, looking no, into no, the no, camera no, lens on your iPhone or whichever smartphone you use, as no, opposed no, to doing no, this. So many people do the selfie promos and they look at themselves rather than the lens. And I find it really distracting and really weird. Thank you. It was then Bailey versus Nobody Mean of Antamina, and what an absolute crazy story came out of this. But I just like Hill Bailey so much, I got into it. it, was, it was you crazy. like Bailey, like, bro? Antamina on social media. I don't really like Bailey. She cool. She's kind of been playing this right, character who now wants to be nice because no one's nicer than Tamina, and that's how she started this match. But as Bailey kept being more of a dick, she screamed, "Ah! Now you've got mean Tamina." And she started to be mean, That's even though both right. personalities were kind of exactly the same. I mean, that is incredible. That is an incredible thing to throw out there. And Bailey, as well, in these empty arena environments, I think she shines. At one point, she meant to say time out, but she said time in, which I'm hoping is going to be a reference to Saved by the Bell. If you know, you know. If you know, don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm just telling you. Tamina grabbed Bailey and just threw her across the announce table at one point. It looked absolutely brutal. Unfortunately, as ever, WWE had to revert to task because Tamina had this match won at one point, if you can believe it. She had Samoan drop Bailey straight to hell just as the referee was about to hit three. Sasha Banks just got in the ring. And how that's not a disqualification, I don't know. Then Tamina chased her around as opposed to, you know, focus on her opponent. And then when she got back in the squared circle, Bailey was ready. And she hit the most devastating move surprise roll in up. all of sports entertainment. Su the surprise roll oh. up. But whatever. She still got the dub, I guess. Devastating. She gets the win. She's still the champion. We bring down the board. That's 31, and we're not even in the summer. I can't understand yeah, that what's going crazy. on. And that finish gets a down, which is a shame, because I always enjoy it. However, there was some more teasing before this that we are going to get Bailey versus Sasha Banks at some point. That's what I want. Bailey wouldn't let Sasha get a word in when they were being interviewed. I'm trying to see Sasha beat the brakes off of Bailey and take that championship. All right, my nigga, Seth Rollins. Interesting twist. He wants to win the WWE title to relieve Drew McIntyre of his burden. Oh, that's kind of interesting and kind of cool. But then, seconds later, we were having Braun Strowman versus Bray White for the Universal Championship. And Michael Cole said, oh, well, Bray White has said to Braun, he wants to remove him of the burden of the Universal title. I'm like, uh, like one, I don't think that's a storyline here unless I've gone crazy. And two, if it is... Why are you doing the same narrative across the That's Seth Rollins. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. I feel it. Things always do is getting a doubt. How no, I ain't gonna give it. Simon, you be paying. You be tripping. Chill, my nigga. Because was this the best match I've ever seen? No, it was not. Do I think I'll ever watch it again? No. But when it comes to characters and at least trying something new, I appreciated it. Getting it up. And it was right. this one great kick out after Sister Abigail that actually got me. I went, oh, Bray Wyatt is going to win the championship, but he did not. 
Of course we had Firefly Funhouse right here, you know, the kids' TV presenter, who just dances around. Uh... It wasn't even about the match, it was just me appreciating how well he has that character down. Like when mm. he first got to the ring during his interview, it wasn't creepy. he was over at the announcers and said, you guys are doing a great job, no matter what anybody else said. I love stuff like that. It makes me feel like I'm so it wasn't creepy, Bray Wyatt. It wasn't the thing. Like I say, I got into it. We really did beat the hoo-ha out of each other too. There were some stiff shots going in, which makes sense because they're not small people. And when it does come to the finish, I will say this. As I already mentioned, as a little bit gaga, it was a little bit amateur theatre, but at least it was WWE doing something. It wasn't a DQ, and it wasn't the most devastating move in all the sports entertainment. I can't rag on that, and then rag on them for trying to be creative. Yeah. With that said, yes, at one point Braun Strowman rose from below the ring apron to reveal that he was wearing his Wyatt family mask. And I think the supposed reaction was going to be, oh my god. And I went, because <laughs> it was the cheesiest thing I'd ever seen. I mean, look. <laughs> you still. Why is Simon wearing a plastic mask? Hey, this dude, Simon, bro. Puppet, I love this dude, man. Puppet, you you stupid. And Bray Wyatt was like, oh, we've done it. Braun Strowman is coming back. Hey, Braun getting buff. He losing weight. Remember, he was fat. He took the mask off and he stamped on it. That cost 75p. I regret doing that. He hit Bray with the running power slam when he got the one, two, three. And you kind of knew this was going to happen when it was Firefly Funhouse, Bray, because he can lose and nobody cares. Yeah, Give it wasn't the theme. Maybe, I think we got through together, so all right. There was some major teasing afterwards, and now the fiend is gonna go after the monster. I knew there, it. And that seems obvious as well. Yeah. And it was just that reveal of the mask. I didn't even realize it was the mask at first. I thought Braun Strowman had like stuck his face into a bunch of food and accidentally not wiped it off. What are you gonna do? We went straight into our other world title match after this, and we are doubling down on the new Seth Rollins character because he officially has new music, and it sounds like it came straight out of an RPG video game menu, but I'm all right That's with that. Tight. I also think this is smart because Seth at one point will be a babyface again, and when you hear the you will have that trigger reaction in your stomach and you will cheer. That's one of the mistakes WWE made with Roman Reigns. Let's remove him from all of that. Also, this match was absolutely fabulous. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I felt so sorry for him and Drew McIntyre here, because if we did have the noise of the crowd, they, without two shadows of a doubt, yeah. would have got into this. It was damn electric. I know it's nobody's fault, unless, of course, the disease is watching this, and then it is your fault. So flub you, you mother hubbard, you piece of shit. This I'm going to cool. find you, and I'm going to whip your nick jazz. Like he is so corny. I love this cat, bro. And then they sped things up, and they were throwing each other around. Seth got hurled into the announce table again, and we've already seen it once, but somehow twice, it was still brilliant. And then Drew was in the tree of one position at one point, basically did a sit-up using his core, and grabbed Seth Rollins and chucked him halfway across the ring. It looked great. There were these really cool sequences too, where they just kept reversing each other's moves, or countering each other's moves, as if they were playing WWE 2K. No, that's not true. If they were playing WWE 2K20, they would just glitch through each other's heads, but let's not even worry about that. And so, for example, Seth Rollins would yeah, get back in the Super 2K20 got he hella glitches. With a Glasgow kiss, and they just kept doing this to the point it was like a game of tennis. You were like, oh, 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 satisfying. McIntyre was even kicking out at the count of one three quarters into the match, which once again just made him feel like a damn he super fucking hero. beast, yeah. Even the ending kicked all the behind because Seth thought he was in control, went for some curb stops and some super kicks, but then from nowhere he got smashed with the claymore. He went down because the claymore kick is an actual devastating move. I like you know that shit deadly. About. And Drew McIntyre remains a WWE. Okay, player. okay. Such a good show. I'm not mad. Seth Drew McIntyre is a beast. Was, I like great. Seth Rollins better. See where the story goes. But, but Drew McIntyre is a beast. I'm not mad at it. Comes across as a good sportsman. And I like a good sportsman, it makes me like you more. Drew McIntyre, Ooh. ladies and gentlemen, he is flipping the best. Yeah, this I like Drew McIntyre. And not only did he actually think he had had a match with MVP, but he also thought he had won. That's our truth for you, everybody. What? The hero of the hour. He then showed a picture of himself holding the 24-7 title, saying without it, he felt lonely, and that now he is going to get it back and told Tom Brady to watch his ass. Of course, he met Rob Gronkowski, but again, our truth Somebody give him a lifetime deal. And then, my friends, it was time for the Money on the Roof match. And I don't even know what I'm going to tell you. Other than talking about ridiculousness and goofiness, this may be one of the best things I've ever seen in my damn life. Because the starters, 
We have proper entrances for everybody in this. So the women entered into the lobby and the men entered into the gym. But because we kind of gave them like name templates, it was like watching some crappy video game that came out on the snares back in the 90s. And then straight away I knew this was going to be the best thing ever because when Oscar had her entrance, she was on the balcony and she just dove off into everyone, started doing a dance and then legged it in a lift. What? <coughs> However, before we start huh? down, I've got to say, this was like being on a roller coaster worth of emotions for me and it's getting it up. I also got my dream so fighting in the WWE HQ Fitness Center and I wanted to get a closer eye on it and it looked great. Then you had Rey Mysterio doing modified hurricane runners using the dipping bars, and Baron Corbin picking up a 45 pound weight and just chucking it at somebody missing and smashing the mirror in the gym. And he responded to this like a kid and started laughing. Broke his parents' bedroom window. So Baron oh. Corbin, ladies and gentlemen, is happy to threaten death by chucking someone off the roof, but if he breaks some glass, he turns into a 40 year old. There you go. Otis also trapped AJ Styles under a really heavy barbell that realistically anybody could have got out of. And when Ray Mysterio <laughs> ran past the He's toilet, stupid. Brother Love came out and Ray stared at him and smiled like, oh man, you're my favourite person ever. I felt like I was on drugs. Now it is <laughs> a that was carnage to watch, like a school scrap we used to have in the playground. And the amount of instances with wrestlers just standing around looking confused before running off to do something else that was happening around about every 25 seconds. Also, Doink was hiding behind an office chair. At one point. <laughs> what the Doink fuck happened? Okay, I kind of want to watch this. Wear some kind of a this shit is just weird, huh? Random employee. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be Doink. I could have done without that. What? Because that absolutely made no sense. And there's also this other twist. A lot just sound like it don't make sense. Women wrestlers didn't know they were meant to go to the roof to get the briefcase, even though all WWE has done for the last 72 years is say, oh, the briefcase is on the roof. Where's the briefcase on the roof? Oh, the risk is worth the award. Oh, it's so original. The roof, the roof, the roof. Because they were fighting in like a meeting room. Dana Brooke saw a briefcase just hanging from the ceiling. So she grabbed it and acted like she'd won. Then Stephanie McMahon popped up in another cameo and basically went, Dana, you moron. You're meant to get to the roof. This is the money in the bank conference room, which is not a thing. That was dumb. That was dumb. Because as a fan, I'm like, wait, why do I know what they're supposed to do? But they don't know what they're supposed to do. And I get it, it's because this was shot weeks ago. But remember that and tie it into the storylines on TV. That's a doubt. Anything like this, though, was almost made up for instantly, especially when it comes to AJ Styles. The immortal AJ Styles, who could be my new favorite person on the planet. He was walking around the corridors at one point and he saw a picture of The Undertaker and he got so freaked out because, of course, he would. The Undertaker killed the phenomenal one, mm -hmm. and yet sometimes he got out of the dirt. Then there was an Undertaker themed room with a casket in so and, he the there, and he chucked AJ in. He didn't lock the door, but Styles apparently was trapped in there. You tell me. I don't have an answer, and nor do I have an answer as to why Paul Heyman was in catering, just eating lunch. And then I was turned up, he saw the food, started to go, shouted food fight, and so they had a food fight. But I tell you, this is so random. What the fuck? Then John Laurinaitis got hit with a pie. Dana Brooks slipped on some wet floor. So this was just funny. When AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan fought into Vince McMahon's office before getting told off by the boss and then acting like school children again the second time. It was just like, thing, 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 thing. Yeah, thing. this is a random. At one point, you were onto another point so fast that maybe you liked that one. This was absolutely just mad. There was no flow here whatsoever. I'm not trying to pretend there was because all of a sudden we were on the roof. And actually, you know, this was safer than a normal Money in the Bank ladder match because there wasn't any too crazy ladder spots. But it was kind of nice seeing the traffic in the background. That was a different visual. And I also got very excited when it was Oscar that appeared and started to climb up the ladder. It genuinely seemed like she was going to win until Baron Corbin arrived. And this is when it got bizarre again because he started climbing the other side of the ladder. But Oscar just talked him in the face. I was like, he can grab the men's one. And you could have the first one. The reason I was freaking first. out was because I wanted the Empress of Tomorrow to win. But thankfully, my word, she still won. She got the briefcase and I made a noise that I will not repeat from you here. It sounds like a pig giving birth, but I'm just so damn made up. Who saw that coming? I also realized at this point that there'd been no commentary over this because Michael Cole just appeared from nowhere and went, oh, right, Oscar won. And I also appreciated that. Didn't need it. As for the men, well, I was, was trying to get to the briefcase but couldn't because he kept breaking ladders again. And then it happened. Because he's too fat, I'm dead. Y'all shady. And he grabbed Alistair Black and he threw him off the roof. And Damn, Alistair. I don't really have oh. that very well. Well, no, I've described it to you in the same way that WWE showed it to you. It was just like, do you want to go walk down the road? Yeah, that sounds good. 
Do you want to be thrown off the road? Yes, why the hell not? Now, I will say, WWE did add in sound effects here. And from the throw to the landing, it was only about two seconds. So I guess you're meant to think they just fell on a smaller roof on the other side. But I think we all built this up a bit too much. It's kind of just there. But who cares? Baron Corbin is now a murderer, and I look forward to him getting arrested on the We still found the time here to start climbing the ladder again. And he was doing it with AJ Styles. And once again, they turned into youths, and they were fighting over the briefcase. And they were both able to grab it. And at first, I was like, oh no, we're going to have simultaneous money in the bank champion. But that wasn't the case, because how can there be any more? But there is. Then Elias arrived, and you're like, Elias? Where the fuck here? did Elias come from? Baron Corbin with his guitar. He went down, and AJ was so surprised by this, he like juggled the briefcase for a bit. He fumbled it, and it landed in the hand oh! of Otis. And my nigga, all this wood! My friends out there in the land of the internet, I have never been so pleased. In my entire life. Yeah, I'm Otis surprised. Mr. Money in the Bank. That's fire. was coming away as the top guys. I certainly didn't. But That's kind of tight. This punch. And also going back to what I said earlier, why can't Otis cash this in on the tag team division? You'll go, oh, time and that oh. sounds right. Depends what the future plans are. That's Which why he said about the new day. He said, oh, because that's kind of dope. This, and it would be different. I don't think it cracks over Otis at all. If anything, it makes him even better baby face. Remember his brother Tucker, who also right now has gone missing. Tucker, we all hope you're doing okay. It was also the fact that this only went two hours and 23 minutes, which is the greatest thing ever. I think mean, all pay per view should be that length. I mean, it was shorter than Raw, for goodness sake. Hmm. I'm not trying to pretend this wasn't a couple of hours of absolute just nonsense and carnage and mayhem. It certainly was. But look, did it entertain me? You're damn right. It sounds so fucking insane. Like, like, and all the way at the intro, that's all I read right now. Just do crazy things. Be stupid because you can get away with it. If I can enjoy myself, then hey ho, I will give you two thumbs up and an overall arrow that says give it up. First and foremost, shout out to my guy Simon for the great review like always. Simon, you are very appreciated. Um, yeah, man. So Otis got the fucking money in the bank. I already knew that Oscar got it, because I reacted to Becky Lynch saying she's pregnant. So Oscar got it. Well, Oscar was the fucking champion. Otis got the money in the bank. That's hella random. I like it though. I like it. Uh, Drew McIntyre still champion. He beat Seth Rollins. I like Drew. He's a beast. I like Seth Rollins more, but Drew McIntyre still beast. So I'm not, I'm not you know what I'm saying? I ain't tripping off of that. Um, it sounded like it was cool. It sounded hella fucking just random. You know what I'm saying? It sounded very, very random, but it seemed like it was pretty good. Simon said he liked it, even with all the randomness happening. He said he liked it. The way he described it, it sounded pretty good to me. Let me know if you guys liked it down in the comments. But yeah, now I'm about to react to Raw. Uh, I might do NXT as well. Who knows? We'll see. But I'll see y'all next time. Peace.